Historically, Magruder Hospital has hosted monthly educational luncheons in the conference center, but due to COVID restrictions, that's not possible at this time. But we certainly still want to share health information with our communities. So we thank Mrs. Pels and the Port Clinton High School video production class for helping us do that. As with any health information you hear or read, it's always a good idea to run things by your primary care provider before making any changes. Today, our speakers are Kim Lenahan, clinical dietitian at Magruder, and Tracy Stadler, clinical dietitian and director of nutrition at Magruder, talking about how to make sense of all the nutrition information overload. Take it away, ladies. Hello, Kim. Hi, Tracy. So, we are here today to give you a wonderful presentation on a lot of different things you may be hearing out there on nutrition. So you may think that you are seeing Kim and Tracy here right now. However, we have something really fun planned for you, right? Oh yeah. It's going to be awesome. So we're putting some humor into it and it's going to be fun and you're going to love it. So if you just hold for one second and we're going to get into character. Ready? Ready. Pause. Hello, hello! Hey, Tracy, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing, Kim? I'm doing so good. Excellent, excellent. So, um, I have really, really been looking forward to this. Do you wanna know why? Yes. Because there is so much stuff out there that I hear. Oh, it's got to be low fat, it's got to be low calorie, it's got to be gluten free, it's got to have no taste, it's got to have all this and all kinds of stuff. I need help because at this point, I have to tell you, all I can find that fits into all that is this great glass of ice. 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 That's all you could come up with. I'm telling you, and let me tell you where you can find the best ice. These small little pieces at Magruder Hospital Fulton Street Cafe. Awesome! Best ice you're ever going to find. That is so funny because they actually do have the best ice. I like ice as well. However, I also like food. I really like to eat food. Well, I love food too. I love food too. And um, what's your favorite kind of food? Oh, well, I tell you, it really changes. It just changes on my mood and on the season. We're getting into fall. So I just, oh, right now, I don't know. I, let's, let's, I don't know. Think about breakfast. What do you like for breakfast? Oh, I like all kinds of things for breakfast. I like um, cereal. I like English muffins. Mm. I love fruit. I yeah. love fruit. Oh, that's wonderful. But here's my question for you. Okay. Isn't fruit bad for you? Because I really want to try that low carb stuff. And okay. fruit doesn't have it all that sugar in it. You know what? Some fruits do. So there's different variations of low carb diets. Were you thinking keto? Um, I, I don't know. What is that? Okay, so keto is like ultra low carb. So think maybe 25 grams or less per day, which is about equivalent to a little less than two slices of bread or bread equivalents. Oh. Um, in other words, so the main source of energy for your body, so the main source of fuel that your body loves is actually carbohydrates. Well, if you take the carbs away, the body still needs fuel. So what it'll do, it, it'll use fat. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is I can use my muffin top for good and not evil? <laughs> Sign me up! Yeah. I'll do no carbs. Yeah. Well, you know what, it does sound really enticing, but let's think about why it might not be good for you or maybe some people that are also watching. When you do ultra low carb or like a keto diet, it really has to fit into your lifestyle. So what that means is no pasta, no bread bowl, no taco Tuesday, no margaritas, no birthday cake. Oh. Yeah. And well, I know I you know have a that, you though. have a, you know, a great big family and you guys like to celebrate and I also know you do pretty good health-wise, 
But you really gotta think, is that particularly the right diet for you? I hear you saying that you love fruit. Would you be willing to give up crispy fall, just pick down the street apples? Yeah, I don't think so. All right, so, you know, that's something to think about. But here's the, here's the great thing about low carb is that you can incorporate it in to some of your meals in the day. So take breakfast, all right? Okay. So how does um, a veggie omelet with caramelized tomatoes on it and fresh basil and a little sprinkling of um, mozzarella on it with a side of berries? You know what? That sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. And you're sure the fruit's okay? Positive. Not bad. No, because really what you, you want, fruit. you want a high protein, low carb breakfast to really start off your day. It kind of sets the tone. When you have really a high carb breakfast, or a high protein, apologize, a high protein breakfast with just a little bit of carbs, you really stay full much longer, and by 10 a.m., you really don't want to go for that cookie that somebody brought in down the hallway. Mm, okay, well, so then what do you think is too much carbohydrate? Oh, well, you know, it really depends on what your goals are and what, uh, as far as weight loss. It also depends on if you have any other diseases. If you have diabetes, certainly you would want to look and talk to a dietitian, particularly, I don't know, one at Magruder Hospital, who's a certified diabetes educator, whose name is Tracy, and <laughs> she can actually direct you entirely and tell you how many carbs are good for you. Well, okay, then let me ask you this. My friend, mm -hmm. she does about 25 grams of carbohydrate a day. Is that too much? Oh, well, no, but with keto, if she's following the keto diet, that's probably what she's shooting for. But I'm kind of hearing from you that you don't think you want to do that. But why isn't the breakfast that I suggested with the fruit and the omelet? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm getting hungry right now thinking about it. Well, it does sound delicious, and I would love to have it. I wonder why my friend doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I could try that. Well... I think probably the biggest pitfalls in making omelets or different things like that that are at home is we are kind of crunched for time. <laughs> I know for as much as I say that I love it, it's not really a weekday work thing that I'm going to make. Yeah, I have so. to agree with you because it does get pretty crazy in the morning just trying to get everyone out the door, make sure they all have what they need, then I've got to get to work. So it's got to be something quick. Yeah, I yeah. No, I completely get it because I'll tell you, it's so easy to have a really high-carb breakfast in the morning because think of, you know, um, granola bars or, you know, any kind of easy snack food, a piece of toast, a, a Pop-Tart, a grab-and-go waffle, something like that. Those are all going to be really high in carbs, and you're not going to get the protein from it. So one of the things that I do at home, which I think really helps, especially because, yes, I got three kids. We're getting out of the door. We're back in school. Life is great. I'm getting to work. Um, but some, sometimes what I'll do is on the weekends, I'll make a whole bunch of energy bites have you heard of those oh yeah yeah so they're so easy i've never to had make. them but they look really good oh they're so good and they're super duper easy to make so you can just take some peanut butter and some ground flaxseed and i use hemp seeds and so for two tablespoons it has seven grams of protein in it so between that mm. and the protein and then you mix it with some oats um so again oats aren't aren't um, gluten-free, so it doesn't fit into your ice cup, but, Probably not. <laughs> but uh, you can mix that all up. I actually like to add some protein powder into it to give it really a nice big punch. Um, and sometimes for sweetness, I'll add some sweetened coconut or like coconut flakes or even some chocolate chips. Oh, 
That would be delicious. Yeah. And, and that would be an easy breakfast, wouldn't it? Oh my gosh, it's so easy. So you make them in advance, like on the weekend. Okay. You pre-portion them into little balls that are about this big. Okay. So think of a ping pong ball size. Okay. Pop them in the freezer. And then you can just grab one or two of them because of all that good type of fat in there. Your energy bites are going to be about 175 calories. So two of them are pretty much, that's good. That's a good um, calorie load for you in the morning, but definitely high protein. And then I, I drink a smoothie almost every morning, although I have a wonderful husband who makes it for me. Oh. Yeah. So, um, and that's where you can get your fruit in. You can actually okay. drink your fruit. And also we add a little bit extra protein powder in with our fruit smoothie. And how we make that, we start off with some ice, just, I don't know, maybe about a half a cup. Then we added about a cup of frozen blueberries, add about another oh. cup of unsweetened 30 calorie almond milk that has no sugar in it. So you I can't have tried like, that, that's good. Yeah, and it I really, like it, it's, you know, the different brands have different flavors, but it's, it's just a phenomenal smoothie. And then um, a banana, so that's gonna, bananas do have a little bit more carbohydrates um, then say watermelon. Watermelon for a half a cup, it's only five grams of carbs. Oh. But anyway, you're still getting a ton of fruit, a ton of um, nutrition in there. And that serving is actually for two people. So, and maybe third if you have a daughter who's like, Mom, can I share your smoothie? <laughs> um, but so really you've got, again, you have a high protein breakfast. You've got that fruit. And I mean, fruits are so good with antioxidants and fight off cancer cells and help with immune systems. And certainly in these times, we all want to get our immune system up. That's for sure. That's for sure. Oh, so let me ask you this. Yeah. Why then, you're talking about all this fruit and everything. Why is healthy eating so expensive? Well, it, you know, it really depends on what you think is expensive. Well, let me tell you about this stuff that I just bought. Okay. I don't remember the name of it, but mm -hmm. it's some kind of green juice in a bottle. Oh, yes, I've seen it. Celery juice. I'm Eight thinking. bucks. <laughs> I know. What's up with I, that? I almost coughed myself when I saw the price in that because I was thinking, oh, this looks interesting. I want to try this. And then I saw the cost, $8, and I was like, no, um, I could probably make this at home. So you could make it at home. I mean, a whole thing of salary costs, what, 2 to $3? No. So, I mean, and that's going to give you a ton of servings. Well, that is true. That is true. But, again, where am I going to find the time to make that? Well, I mean, you could always batch make it. You can make it at night, and then you can um, put them in little mason jars, and then the next day you could just you shake just it up. It. Yeah. I mean, personally... I just don't think they taste that good. <laughs> well, they don't taste good, and that's why I was so mad that I paid the eight bucks for it. <laughs> so why, why did you buy it? Well, I bought it because my friend mm -hmm. that lives in Cleveland, yeah, she's she's just gorgeous. I mean, she works out all the time. She does this CrossFit something mm -hmm. all the time, and she's always drinking that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I figure if it worked for her. And if I could have a body like that, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't taste good. Yeah. Well, um, I think I know the friend you're talking about who is um, considerably younger than the both of us. Doesn't have any All right. kids yeah. yet. Um, I think her father owns a car dealership. And so I don't necessarily know if I would be taking uh, what she's eating um, and adapting it to to what you like however she probably does you know if she's doing crossfit and working out she probably is going to be fueling herself with um, some of the latest greatest trends whether they're proven to help or not and i suppose and like you said she doesn't have kids yet so yeah no she what does she know <laughs> that's a whole different we can figure out our time on our own yeah yeah exactly okay. so don't okay. compare yourself to somebody else i know it's so hard and we look at magazines and we look on TV and we see all these people with certain body type. Um, but really what we need to really focus on is how much we're actually nourishing our body. So sometimes, you know, we might have um, other things besides looking like uh, 
some particular person that's our catalyst where you know so it was other pretty superficial i mean wasn't it kind no of. that's okay that's <laughs> okay we i think we've all been there and we've all done that um and you know in other people though they might have some belly issues well I, so all right if we have to be honest <laughs> i'm going to be honest but it hopefully stays right here okay okay so for whatever reason, I've been having these problems mm -hmm. all day long, whether I eat or I don't, and I just, I get bloated and gassy yeah. all the time. And I, I just thought maybe if I drink that stuff, it would clean me out, do a detox like all those people talk about. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and uh, like juice cleanses and juice detoxes, those are really um, popular, but the main thing that I want you to do is if you're having gut problems and you're feeling bloated or you feel like your constipation is, I don't know if you are constipated, but if you're feeling Sometimes. extra gassy, what you really need to do is you need to go to your doctor first. Did you well, go? I did. Good. And so proud of you. I know. I what know. I went and he gave me some medicine, started with a P, I think, and okay. he said, take that. And he also then said, stop eating so much fast food. So I don't eat that much fast food. I, mean, I don't. I mean, Subway, but come on, that guy, whoever that guy was that lost all that weight, so we go to Subway. Mm -hmm. um, Taco Bell. I only get their bean burritos when I go there. Okay. You know, I don't go to McDonald's, but I do like their, whatever they're called, frappe things that uh. the, those are delicious. <laughs> I love those. So, and I'm trying to think. Um, plus, they're not as much as Starbucks, although I do like to go to Starbucks occasionally because, you know, look at all those people in there. They just look so hip and fit. I know. They you know, do. Everything has trendy. to be. Yeah. So <laughs> it has to be healthy stuff in there. So mm -hmm. see, I don't, you know, well, well, I guess when I say it that way, it does sound like I eat more fast food than I think I do, but. Yeah. Well, you know what? And sometimes we, we don't realize how much fast food we're eating because it's part of our normal or we think, oh one to two or two to three times per week is okay. And we are ordering maybe just the vegetarian item. We're only getting one or two things. But, you know, the thing is, a lot of that food is ultra processed. Um, it also could have a really high sodium content. So even that bean burrito is going to be really high in sodium. Mm -hmm. And we also might not realize that things like those flavored iced coffee drinks have a ton of sugar in them. So hmm. say your Starbucks caramel frappuccino, just the small one or tall one or whatever they use for sizes. Grande or something. So there is, without the whipped cream, and who gets it without whipped cream? <laughs> but in the one without whipped cream, it's 10 teaspoons of sugar. You get it mm. with whipped cream and it increases it to 12 teaspoons of sugar that is 48 grams of sugar alone that you just drank in probably 20 minutes from the time you pulled out of the drive-thru to the time you even got home or even less than that hmm. so it could be that so i would really recommend um you think about what your doctor said and just be mindful and maybe have a, a log and just say, you know, almost like a, a New Year's resolution and give yourself 30 days. Be like, Tracy, for 30 days, I'm not doing any fast food that's any place that has a drive through it's out. Okay. And see how you I feel. Can try that. Yeah, I mean, it could be a world of benefit. Um, also, too, you know, those those iced coffee drinks, you know, they have um, dairy in them. And sometimes when we age, especially women, we hit a certain age and there's a, you know, milk has lactose in it. And we produce. And what is lactose? Lactose is a uh, dairy sugar. It's a oh. natural, you know how uh, fructose is in fruit. It's the oh, natural okay. occurring sugar in okay. fruit. So lactose is the natural occurring sugar in dairy products oh. so you know on the keto diet that sugar does count as carbohydrates so you can't have any you know 
can't have a lot of dairy or even no dairy on those. Um, some, some things like cheese and stuff, so even like feta cheese doesn't have um, much lactose in it at all, but your, your milk, your ice cream, your yogurt, it's going to have some of that lactose in it. So if you're starting to feel bloating, it could be that that enzyme, which is called lactase, you could be not... I don't not... drink a lot of milk, though. Well, you know, if, um, if you're not drinking a lot of milk on a regular basis, your body might say, okay, well, if you're not drinking a lot, I'm going to produce less of the lactase that you need to digest the lactose. But then all of a sudden, you hit that, that drive through and you get your Starbucks, and then that's just a whoosh. And it just goes right through you? And could could happen could happen it could happen <laughs> mm -hmm. huh. yeah okay well um hmm what would i do in its place well i really love the flavor of them mm -hmm. well you know there's a lot of things that you could do um you could make your own coffee at home <laughs> actually what i've done before is i'll I'll make a little bit more than what I would typically drink, and then I pour it in um, a cup and I put it in the refrigerator. So now I get the cold coffee, right? Mm -hmm. And then I just add some organic cane sugar, like one teaspoon, not okay. 12. Okay. All right. So, and then I can add in um, so a little bit of vanilla. I love putting cinnamon in my coffee. Oh. Yeah, and then also too, you, you can You may just, have to write that down for me. Okay. Okay. But then I just put it with some ice and I put it in my Vitamix and I blend it. Mm -hmm. You don't even realize. I mean, right. it does taste different. It does, it, when you start taking sugar out of your diet, especially if you were to do almost like, I call them sugar challenges, where kind of like with your fast food and you're going to say, Tracy, no fast food for 30 days. You might just want to uh, look at how much sugar and say, you know what, I'm only going to have, oh, 48 grams of sugar per day, which is actually what the American Heart Association recommends for women. And so that's for the whole day. So if you did that one caramel frappuccino, like mm -hmm. you'd be done. That means you can't have sugar anywhere else. And that would be really hard. But wow. if you just did it for one day, what you would notice is that um, if you were to go kind of back to eating the regular amounts of sugar that you did, your taste buds would almost be like, oh, oh, that's so sweet. Too much sugar. Yeah, like, have you ever met somebody who um, gave up soda for Lent? Yes. Yeah, and then like on Easter, they're like, Ch -ch -ch. You and take they a big drink, drink and it's oh. and they drink their their coke or even their diet coke and they're like oh my god that's so sweet yes yeah so mm -hmm. it's your taste bud saying like oh oh that's that's a little bit of a shock we didn't need to go that far okay right okay so well i have another question yeah. and i think i'm not going to want to hear the answer because i may know it but <laughs> does ice cream have that yeah toast too yeah oh yep sorry yeah. No what about coughs? Yeah, I know the season's ending, and we got to get our I pumpkin guess that's ice a cream good thing. in. But You're so here, me. here's the thing, you know, if you can't do, if you have a really hard time doing portion size, and so I always tell people, get out your teacup, right? Don't get out your big coffee mug or your big ice cream bowl, whatever. Get out the teacups that you inherited from your grandma, and use that as your ice cream scoop so you're only going to be getting about so a half a cup filling that big bowl and not filling it. that big bowl or i mean you did say fruit you could always have fruit for dessert only you would say that <laughs> it's so good i mean i just think of those berries and or you could do grilled pineapple or you know on catawba we're still getting some peaches you could grill up some peaches Ooh. oh mm. you could even cut up some angel food cake and make those little cute little skewers and it's just oh, it's really good. That does sound delicious. Mm -hmm. Could I dip it in Cool Whip? Um, well, now listen. <laughs> have you seen all those Weight Watcher recipes out there? They all have Cool Whip in them. Um, yes, I know. And I don't, like, that is so funny. So first of all, I don't think green drink, drinking um, CrossFit Girl eats Cool Whip. All right? Wow. And the other thing, Cool Whip has a laundry list 
of ingredients that I can't pronounce. It's got refined palm oils in it. It's got high fructose corn syrup. Um, I would say even though it's ultra low calorie, it is beyond fake. And I would say no Cool Whip. I mean, if you wanted to treat yourself and actually make whipped cream, like the real stuff, you'd be much better and then just using a smaller amount. And then also too, you can really control the sugar that you that you put into it. I'm thinking I will probably just forego the Cool Whip. I think so too. I think it's, I can do that. Let's get your belly issues all settled down and let's yeah. give up the Cool Whip. I think you'd be better off. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, th I think I would feel a lot better if I could get those issues taken care mm -hmm. of. Yeah. You know what? Somebody told me that fermented foods, oh. do you, does that, yes. is that something yes. that's yes. supposed to be yes. good for your stomach? Yes, yes. And is it, wait a minute, isn't it your husband who loves kefir or is it your dad? Who loves kefir? Yep. But you, they will both, they will both. It was my dad who found it first uh -huh. and it was, yes. He swears by kefir for his reflux, and so yes, yes my so husband has tried it too. Kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut. You now sauerkraut, I can do. I love yes. sauerkraut. Yes. So sauerkraut and all of those fermented foods, they actually have food for the good bacteria in your body. So think of it as a prebiotic for the probiotics, or probiotics for the prebiotics. I always get confused which one, but yeah, no, that that is fantastic, and so are like onions and garlic and leeks and everything in that kind of family they're so well, what are they going to do they just feed the good bacteria so oh. your body has a plethora it's called the gut microbiome oh. i just think that is the coolest term ever i love it i love learning about the gut but so there's the gut microbiome is everything it's all the good bacteria and all the bad bacteria so like your juice cleanse mm -hmm. gets it flushes everything the good and the bad oh. when you are eating fermented foods though you're actually feeding the goods the good bacteria sugar so those caramel frappuccinos mm -hmm. are feeding the bad bacteria oh so you of course want more good bacteria than the bad bacteria and the good bacteria is going to be constantly doing work to help eliminate all the yucky stuff that kind of builds up in your body over time so yeah so absolutely that's it's just a wonderful thing okay yeah all right well i do love sauerkraut well keep so that on is something keeping i can definitely add more of into mm -hmm. my diet and yeah. then hopefully that's going to help my belly issues yep oh and do okay. you do you snack yes i think you should stop I know. So I swear like a couple years ago or maybe 10 everything, you know, all the years blend together. But didn't you feel like every time you tried to lose weight or I don't know, just make yourself feel better, have more energy. Somebody was saying, oh, you need six small meals a day. You got to eat every two hours. Yeah. I know. Well, that was a mistake. Now oh. that we're learning, because if you think about it, so our whole belly system, like our intestinal tract, is like the Marie Kondo of our body. Wow. Like, you know, Marie Kondo, the uh, creating yeah. organization, cleaning. I do. Okay. That's just pretty cool. Yeah, so super duper cool. So our intestines, they are like the ultimate house cleaners. Like they want to keep scrubbing and they're, clean they're constantly cleaning, right? But when you're snacking every two hours, and 90% of Americans have at least one snack a day, sometimes More multiple snacks. <laughs> so, but when you're snacking, it, it really, it interferes with the body's ability to really clean itself. So think about this. So, so first in March, we couldn't go out anywhere, right? Right. Kids were at home and like trying to clean your house with your kids home is like brushing your teeth with an Oreo. Like it's not gonna get Ooh. done. So then it was summertime. So then we don't have school, but the kids are still home, but it's outside and we had such a glorious summer, right? Yeah. So did I wanna stay home and clean 
or did I want to keep going out and doing stuff? Yeah. Right. So my house never got cleaned. So it was like, think of your kitchen sink, right? And even if it's just you, but all it takes is a little dish and a spoon to have a couple, several snacks throughout the day. By the end of the day, your sink is filled with dishes, right? Mm -hmm. right. Because you never stopped from snacking to do some cleaning that you needed to. So really, that's your body that's, it, it, it wants a break. It needs a break so that it can clean. In fact, you know that grumbling sound that you may hear? And you think, yeah. oh, I Did need you hear mine just a little bit ago? Yeah. Okay. So that's actually your body cleaning itself. It's not telling Pause. you. That is cool. Unpause. <laughs> I know it is so so cool so it's not necessarily your body saying like hey I'm hungry I got to eat every two hours which so many of us are conditioned to eat every two hours because we've been told oh six small meals a day and make your metabolism keep going exactly faster. right no 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 and so we hear we hear these grumblings and we think oh geez we might be hungry <laughs> but what it's actually your body that is like scrubbing it's like mopping and cleaning and doing all this stuff so that it can eliminate all the bad stuff huh so just enjoy it i don't know so yeah get into it dance to it it'll be right and mm -hmm. so next time when i'm at home and my stomach's growling i'm just gonna let everyone know how efficient i am at cleaning you're very efficient. good job very good very good all right so you know what you have taught me so much and answered so many questions that I just nobody's been able to answer for me before. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that so that's been we so chatted. cool. I, mm -hmm. I, I really like that, and I think these are some things, easy things I can do. How about if let, let me do a recap? All right, but you All gotta right. have real quick. Okay, All I'm right. going to recap here. So, number one. I'm going to eat breakfast. Yeah. But what okay. kind of breakfast? I want more protein in it. Yay. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Number two, I'm going to have more fruit. Good job. Fruit for dessert. And now I'll say it too. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay. So number three, uh, I'm going to feed my gut. <laughs> the I'm going to feed the good bacteria. Yeah, feed the good bacteria, not the bad. So yes. lower that sugar. I'm going to do that. Yes. I'm going to do that. Awesome. I'm feeling really, really good about this. Good. Fantastic. Yes. All right. And well, no snacking. You. And I was thinking I could get by without that <laughs> one, but no snacking. No. Okay. No I am snacking. really going to try to do this. Wonderful. I'm so excited. So, so excited. Now. All right. We've got our dietitians. Hats back on. We're back. We're back. We really hope you enjoy this little different programming. And we're in the process. We're not sure when it's going to start. But Magruder Hospital does have a Facebook page. Yes. And hopefully soon you can catch us live during lunch. And we'll share what we're having for lunch there you go. with you. So mm -hmm. please. Nice little nutrition tidbits. Yes. So please join us and keep a lookout for that. And as always, have a wonderful, healthy, and happy day. Day. And you know what else? Make nutrition fun. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.